So there's no right or wrong, just personal preference. You've got to call on all four of them. Who wanted to call on Charles first? Who, who wanted to call? Judy, right here, you wanted, why? Why do you want to call on Charles first? They're going to make sure you're straight. You're going to dot T's, cross I's, or the other way around. They, they want to process, and somebody over here said, yes, sir, why, why is that? A lot like you, path of the least resistance. Yes, sir. But, oh, sure you were. It's kind of like in class. Ditto, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of stuck for an answer now. <laughs> if you go by the book and you're talking to somebody that goes by the book, pretty good deal. Why didn't you choose Charles first? Yes, sir. Why, wait, wait, he's not going to wear you out, but he's going to, why is he going to wear you out? He wants all this information in a way that you don't want to give it to him. Okay, there's no right or wrong, guys. There's no right or wrong. Charles is your accountant. Charles is your engineer. These people are like Bill Gates, Sherlock Holmes. They've been known to proofread Xerox copies. Where are my Sally's? Oh, yes, John, Sally, because? If she's loyal and I can win her over, if I take care of her, I'll have a customer for life. It's going to be very hard for your competitor to sever the relationship you have with Sally. Let's look at the other side of this. If she has a relationship with one of your competitors right now, it's going to be hard for you to sever that, but she is loyal. Why didn't you go with Sally first? What kept you from going with her first? Yes, ma'am. She's a nice person. She won't, she'll tell you maybe. She won't tell you no. You've got to drag it out. She's, she is a nice person. <laughs> Folks, my mama, <laughs> 99 years old, retired when she was 94. My mama. She survived two world wars in the Clinton administration. <laughs> she was born before women had the right to vote. She survived the 27 flood and Katrina. <laughs> she is unbelievable. My mama is solid, but she ain't the one that steps forward and gets all the praise. That's this guy. Where are my Irene's? A whole mess of them. Terry, you went with Irene because? Yeah, these are the people, the Irene's are scheduling your Christmas party right here in August. <laughs> and they already got the Christmas party because they like the party. And you move from there to there. I'm completely thrown off. But in your name again? I'm sorry, Mit Mitzi. M-I-S-S? -S? Of course, Mitzi, like Gaynor. Mitzi Gaynor, okay. Mitzi, why did you choose Irene? Get paid by the sentence. All right, these people are the talkers. You're right. These, why didn't you go with Irene first? Well, yes, ma'am. I don't want to know that much about it. <laughs> All right, these people talk, once again, when they have nothing to do, they want to do it with you. <laughs> yeah. I go to Australia with Mr. and Mrs. Ziggler. So Zig and Jean and I go to Australia in 1996. We do a Pacific Rim tour, and we're in Singapore and different places, but we spend half the time, three weeks in Australia doing sales seminars. Everybody I met in the entire continent of Australia are right here. They talk, they laugh, they, they're all on drugs. <laughs> the happiest people in the world are Australians, and it's, and it's a known fact. They, don't, they have the highest incidence of skin cancer. Do they care? No, shrimp on the barbie, let's go get the roasted. And they're unbelievable. So we're doing a program in Sydney, and it's, and it's a bigger auditorium, this is a nice auditorium. And it's a bigger auditorium than this, but we're on the stage getting ready for the 8.30 start. It's about 8, 8.15, 8.20, and one of the guys makes his way out of the crowd that's following it, and he gets backstage. Now, how they got backstage, he, he broke, I don't know, he broke security. So he's a big Zig fan. He comes up and said, Mr. Zig, I'm a big fan. I got a couple of Australian stories. And Zig says, I don't have time. These people get their feelings hurt. When they're not socially accepted, they get their feelings hurt. So this guy kind of dropped his head, and he was leaving, and Zig said, I made a mistake. So he said, I'm sorry, sir, we've got time for you.
So the guy comes back with a big smile on his face. He says, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A stick. <laughs> He's shaking his head. He said, I got another. And of course you do. He said, why don't blind people skydive? <laughs> Scares their dogs. <laughs> so here are the people that are going to talk. You go to a trade show. You meet an Irene. And this could be Ira. It's, sec- it's genderless. Doesn't matter which sex. You meet an Irene or an Ira, and they get excited at the trade show about what you're selling. You set an appointment for a week later, and all the helium has gone out of their balloon, and you got to pump them back up. If you work with people, let's say you're recruiting people like this, and they get excited on, on the first meeting, and then the helium goes out of there, you got to pump them back up. Irene's. Where are my Davids? Whole mess of Davids. Is it Shelly? Shelly. Why David? Bingo. Cut to the chase. They are decision makers. Who else went with the David? Yes, ma'am. Is it Lisa? Debbie. Lisa's in front. Don't change play. And it's William on the... Okay. Yes, ma'am. Debbie. Um, I was thinking he knows what he wants. Fill his needs. You're out of there because he or she can make a decision. D stands for Debbie, Diane, as well as David. They throw out the most objections. Don't take it personally. They don't. They want the best deal. For those of you in the car business, let them win a skirmish. Because they want, I got a great deal. Yeah, I want, I got the undercut, the accessory. They just want to win a little battle, not the whole war, but they enjoy the negotiate. Why didn't you go with David first? Because they enjoyed the negotiation. Because you, exactly. So, so sometimes you don't want to start your day off with a David. Now, I know about the David because... This is my father-in-law. My mother-in-law and my mom are here. My father was here, and my father-in-law was here. My father-in-law's from Detroit, Michigan. Where he came from, there was no gray. Black, white, ain't nothing in between. My father-in-law's the kind of guy that says, hey, stop telling me about your labor pains. Show me a baby. (laughs) So imagine the pressure I'm under. I take Cindy, I'm going to ask, for you young people, before credit cards, there was something called layaway. So I put the, I put the ring on layaway in a jewelry store in Baton Rouge. And in 1970, I got the, got the ring out of hock. And I went to take her to a nice restaurant. Now, there was one nice restaurant in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, though. That was the night the lady came out. Her thumb was on my steak. And she set the plate down. I said, hey, your thumb's on my steak. She said, yeah, I'm not going to drop this again. <laughs> So the next day, I go in and ask Mr. Katie. I said, Mr. Katie, I'd like to marry Cindy. He said, can you support a family? I said, yes, sir. He said, good. Counting Cindy, there are five of us. <laughs> All right, now you know as well as I do that you don't have a choice of who you call on. You've got to call on all of these people. You'll also take a look at that page. Please take a look at that page and quickly go through each of those traits, all 16 of those traits. You are a combination of all of those traits. I'm a combination of all of those traits. I've got all four of these quadrants living inside of me. I got all four living. However, I've got one trait that's larger than the other traits. I got one quadrant that I stay in more often than the other quadrants. If you understand that and you can give me information where it's easier for me to receive it, that we're going to build trust, have a good time, do some business together. But if you're forcing something on me that's not to my quadrant, then I'm going to back up a little bit. So these people want direct action. These people don't. These people want to talk about their slow-pitch softball teams. These people don't want you to. There are five reasons people don't buy from you. No want, no need, no hurry, no money. Those four we deal with all the time. The fifth reason causes you to lose the most sleep and the most money. The fifth reason, no trust. If I understand that you want bottom line information, you want it now and you want it organized, then I don't want to beat around the bush. I don't want to show up late. I want to be punctual. I want to be professional. I want to be, if I know you want to talk about your grandchildren, then let's go. But you've got to learn to throw different pitches to different batters. One of the many mistakes I made early in my sales career, I was selling to all of you like I wanted to be sold unto. And I was missing 75% of my territory. 
because there's only one quadrant up there like me. Now, I'm, I'm like you, I'm a combination of all of them, but I'm to the extreme in one of mine you're about to see. Please turn back, not forward, turn back a page to page four. Sandra, thank you for that. Because I want to take a look at you in the work environment. At the top of the page, it says your behavioral style. What I would like you to do is above that, write two words. Please write these two words, at work. I want to take a look at you in the work environment to see where you fall in in the work environment, what your high and your low and your in-between. To do that, I need to read you the instructions. You can read those to yourself. You are going to look at four words going left to right ten times. You're going to look at the four words going left to right. You're going to take a look at those four words. Of those four words, which of these words most describe your behavior at work? On the same line, which word then describes your behavior? On the same line, which word somewhat describes your behavior? And on the same line, which word least describes your behavior? The word that most describes your behavior, you're going to set four in front of. The word that then describes three, some that describes two, and the word that least describes you is one. And you can do that ten times. I need your attention up here. I need your attention. Going left to right. We're going to go left to right. Four, three, two, one in any order. Here's the key. You can't have a repeating number going left to right. You can't have two threes going left to right. One, two, three, four, go to the next line. One, two, three, four. Once you finish that, you're going to total up each column and post that total at the bottom, and then I'll fill you in on the rest. Five-minute exercise. Have a question. Raise your hand or come to your side. Ready, get set, grow. Grow.